Sorry for the delay, everyone. We had some uh, tech issues, but we should be able to begin our webinar shortly. Give us just a moment and Amina will take it from there in just a bit. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm actually, uh, I think we're, we're still waiting on Eileen uh, to join since we had to send oh. her. Yeah, so let's just okay. wait for her to be join the uh, webinar event. All right, okay, have you seen my text message? Uh, no, but we are recording, so give, give us a, one second. Sure, oh gosh. We should be able to start uh, shortly. So again, sorry everyone for the delay in the start time, um, but we will be able to start as soon as we figure out all the tech issues.
Hey everyone, thanks again for joining. We're experiencing some tech issues. Uh, we will be uh, moving forward with our presentation shortly. Apologies for the delay. Thank you for your patience. Um, we are going to be starting shortly. We should be able to, I'm just gonna Okay, we should be able to start shortly. I think the speaker is joining us soon.
Thank you for your patience. Um, we're still just waiting to sort out some tech issues. Give us a few more minutes. We hope to sort this out and we'll get started with Ms. Eileen Tejeda, who will be joining us. Um, we just had some tech issues and um, she was on the call and we're trying to sort everything out right now. Hey team, I'm in the room. Hello everyone. Uh, Ms. Arlene has joined us and will be beginning shortly, but I would like to invite you all and welcome, I would like to welcome you all to our speaker series. And uh, like I said, our presenter today is Ms. Arlene Tahide. She is the Assistant Professor of Practice at the Relay Graduate School of Education. Uh, Eileen, I'll let you take it on from here. Thank you so much, Amina. Thank you all for your time here today. Um, I'm excited to join all of you here a little bit. As Amina mentioned, my name is Eileen Tejeda, and I was born and raised in the South Bronx, which is a borough here in New York City. I, uh, my love for school began when I attended Head Start, which is a federal program here that serves um, students and families from low-income communities. It's really where my love for school began. Um, my mother um, didn't make a lot of money, but she really valued, um, valued education and knew that um, educating me and my older sister was something that was really important to her. So she, um, the way that she was able to do that was by sending us to Catholic school. I went to a Catholic school from K through 12. And for my high school experience, I went to Aquinas High School, which is a high school here in the Bronx. I love the Aquinas High School. Um, and I think that those were probably my most important and formative years. It's an all girls Catholic school served by the Dominican Sisters of Spark Hill. And that's really where um, I started making some choices for myself about what I wanted my future to look like. From Aquinas, I um, went to Georgetown University in Washington, D.C., where I studied English and theology. If you're familiar with Georgetown, it's a Jesuit university in, um, in D.C., and it's centered on men and women for others. So there, I think that I, I, I thought about my educational experience, but I really started thinking about social justice and that, that being something that is center to my work every day. As I mentioned, Aquinas High School was incredibly important to me, so much so that when I was when I graduated from college, I went straight back to Aquinas to teach. Mm -hmm. I was a teacher there for four years and there I taught religion um, and writing. I was also somehow, not sure how this happened, but I became the softball coach. Here's a picture of um, the young women that I coached my, um, my second, third, and fourth year at Aquinas. If you see on the bottom there, I think I took away three things from my time at Aquinas. The emphasis on women empowerment and being in a strong space um, of young women and interacting with them every single day and understanding the importance of being inspired by those young people and in turn trying my best to inspire them and serve as a guide in their development. Similarly, I took away the experience or the, the, the ideal of lifelong learning. Um, I consider myself a, I guess you might call it a nerd, but I love learning, I love reading, and I love um, opportunities to grow my mind. And then tenacity. Um, the young women that I served were um, some of the grittiest um, and most incredible individuals I've ever met. And they only pushed me to work harder and to figure out um, whatever it was that I wanted, um, that I could get it, so long as I had a plan for it. From Aquinas, I knew that I wanted um, to spend my life's work um, in education, but I 
felt like I needed um, to go to graduate school so I could get the language um, and tools to be able to make an impact in education outside of K-12 classrooms in service of K-12 classrooms. So in 2011, I went to the Harvard Graduate School of Education where I studied education policy and management. And there's a picture of me very much overwhelmed um, by emotions and feelings um, at my Harvard graduation. Um, I don't ever think that, I always knew that I, that, that I was destined to do something really great for education. Um, growing up, I never thought that Harvard would be somewhere that I would go as an adult. And it's still um, something that I sit back and think about how, how awesome that is. And I have my mother and my family members to thank for that. I think without having gone to graduate school, without having gone to Harvard, I wouldn't have been able to go to the organizations that I went to after. I mean, you've got a couple of examples there. Um, after Harvard, I moved to Chicago where I worked for the Illinois Network of Charter Schools and spent a lot of time there working with families and um, preparing families to give speeches and presentations at the Capitol, in the Capitol of, um, of the state of Illinois to ensure that they were able to get high quality public school options in their communities. From there, I went to KIPP Foundation, which is a national network of, of schools, of K-12 schools and worked on um, data and assessment and curriculum design um, for the National Network of Schools. From there, it led me to my work um, where I'm presently at, at Relay Graduate School of Education, which is a teacher preparation program in New York City, but also nationally. My job is to work with um, apprentice teachers, teachers who are not full-time teachers of record, but those that are um, eager and excited to begin their career. A little bit more about me, and I think you probably have heard some of it in my presentation. Um, one, social justice is what fuels me, thinking about how we can make equal opportunities for all people, no matter where they grow up, no matter their family situation, no matter their ability, um, making sure that we work hard to ensure that systems are fair and equitable. Similarly, um, Civic engagement and policy is incredibly important to me. I spent time at Harvard um, studying education policy and with the most recent um, federal election here or national um, election here, it became even more clear how important it is to vote, it, how important it is to inspire young people to vote and also just as important to show people how important it is to vote, not just in a national election, but in districts too. So it's something that whenever I teach my teachers or engage with young people, reminding them of the power that they do have in voting. This leads me to what I do every single day. Um, as Amina mentioned, I'm an assistant professor of practice at Relay Graduate School of Education. Um, and it is a master's program that certifies teachers in New York City. I spend most of my days teaching, grading, and coaching first-year teachers all over New York City, popping into their classrooms, seeing them with their students, and observing them all over um, schools in New York. Um, the schools that I'm working with this year are primarily in Brooklyn and the Bronx, um, two of the largest boroughs here in New York City. You might be wondering how I got to this work, um, but if you heard uh, since I was a little girl, education was foremost in my, in my life. And some of the teachers that I had were part of that reason. So I figured why not become a teacher and then figure out how to get really good at that so that I can best support teachers. I've spent about the last 10 years since I graduated from college to become an expert in this work through experience in the field and different organizations by going to graduate school and really solidifying that education and those that, that language. Internships at graduate school and in summers, a school leadership position in Chicago, and also this understanding assessment data. I feel like I've spent the last 10 years getting really good at teaching, but also understanding all of the things that impact teaching and influence teaching so that I can then coach teachers in the best and most knowledgeable way. 
This is a time and task management workshop. So I did want to show a typical day in the life. This is a real true snapshot of my calendar for next week, um, Monday through Friday. I love Outlook and calendaring as you'll continue to learn about me um, and color co coordinating, color, color, color coordinating on my calendar really does uh, make it one, easy to look at and nice to look at um, and make something that might seem a little bit um, daunting, much more fun and approachable. It also just helps to keep me organized. Um, I know it might be a little bit difficult to see, but the way that my um, weeks are broken up is usually with some sort of professional development. And you'll see that is in the, the reddish color. Um, grading and scoring assessments. It is a graduate school and I'm a professor, so I'm scoring work. You'll see those blocks in yellow. Actual teaching time. So the times that I spent in front of my graduate student, students teaching are in green. Um, Tuesday evenings, Wednesday mornings, and Thursdays. And then the, I guess the lighter green, that aqua color, um, is something that I call vital behaviors. So it's an opportunity for me to plan for time when I'm going to rest and rejuvenate so that I can do this work well. You'll see next Friday, October 6th, I'm taking a full comp day. So it'll be an opportunity for me to spend time working on my hobbies and resting and doing the things um, that give me energy so that I can turn around and be my best self for the work. I highly recommend if you don't color, cord your, color coordinate your calendar to do so, it really helps. In thinking about time and task management, I think about it in these three big buckets. Brainstorming, and that can be just brainstorming anything. What are the ideas that you have? What are the things that you are excited about? What are the things that motivate you? What types of careers are you interested in? What are some that maybe you don't know too much about and you wanna just put on the list so you can spend some more time researching? From there, once you've got a bulk of ideas, thinking about setting goals and priorities so that you're able to, um, so that you're able to narrow down your focus and what it is that you want. And then working towards your goal. So putting the plans into action. That's how I think about how um, anything in my personal and professional life, how I'll break it down. I'm gonna go ahead and just share my, um, you can see my face as I'm talking. This is a little more personal. Um, and this idea of putting it all together. So I broke it up into three categories and you can figure out what names you wanna call these things. But I break it out into the what. So those are like the priorities and those big goals that you have from that brainstorm list. The when, so when it's actually gonna happen and how you prioritize what's most important. And then the which, so like how do you get really specific and granular about those things in order to get it done? I'm gonna give you guys two examples, one from my personal life and one from my professional life, and then I can let you know what this might look like for you as young people. So personally, um, I had a goal about three years ago in 2014, and I was going to run a half marathon. Um, there are a lot of things going on in my life around that time. Um, I had just moved into a new place. There have been some transitions at work. Um, I missed my family because I was living in another state, and I really needed something that, that I needed, that I wanted to commit to, and that was would be hard for me. So I decided to sign up for a half marathon um, later on that year in September. So that's the what. That was the big thing for me. The when um, is taking time to think about when this is going to happen. Um, September was the target date to run this marathon. And then along with that, there was an, another piece like the when I was thinking about it more granularly in, in thinking about the goal time that I had. How fast did I want to be able to run this half marathon? From there, once I figured out those two big things, um, I got into the which. So got a little bit more specific and broke down a run schedule. When would I be running? How many miles would I be running? Um, what would I be eating so that I could run and not die? Um, and then uh, just doing it and actually running the half marathon on race day. Um, I found that doing this it felt fun for me. So I don't, maybe it doesn't, might not feel like time and task management, but it is because if I didn't have a plan, if I didn't have a goal, if I didn't break it down, break it down, I wouldn't have been able to do it and be successful. This first half marathon turned into many. 
So you'll see a couple of pictures of me. Um, running has become something that I absolutely love and I love taking pictures of. So you've got me there with my bagel, me running and smiling for the camera. And then I'm um, most recently running a race in the Bronx. Professionally, this past year, um, well, this year it happened, but late last year, I decided that I wanted to get a promotion at my job. Before becoming an assistant professor of practice, I was a senior instructional fellow, which did a lot of the same work, um, but I didn't have as much teaching time. And teaching is something that I absolutely loved, so I wanted to make sure that I was in a place where I was teaching more and doing a lot of that work. So I made a decision and said, like, I'm going to get promoted in March. This is something that I want. That was the what for me for two reasons. One, I wanted the new the, the new responsibilities and I wanted the uh, higher salary. It was important to me to make more money. Um, it's something I live in New York City. Um, I feel like I've been putting in a lot of effort um, over the past 10 years. And I want to make sure that I'm being compensated fairly um, for the work that I do. The when. Um, I had to start thinking about when performance reviews were happening um, intermittently so that I could get the right feedback that I needed. I needed to know when those observations were happening in my classroom um, so that I was getting um, the right feedback and I was preparing for it. And then the which, um, I was going in and scheduling time for practice with colleagues so that I could be better um, so that when my manager came in and saw me, she was able to see my best work. Um, and also having um, some very scheduling time to have manager conversations so that when it came time to interview, I was not surprised, but I was absolutely ready. For you all, I imagine that um, college or career is your goal. Um, so this might this is might be how it might look for um, some of you who are thinking about college as that the what. Um, getting that acceptance letter, and of course, getting some money so that you can go um, and, and not have to pay as much for it. The when for you, it's probably looking like the fall and the spring. So a full calendar year, depending on your grade level. If you're a junior, if you're in your, in your sophomore year, this timeline might look a little bit longer for you, but generally I'm um, over an academic year. You might have a target of May 1st, you might have a monthly timeline that you break down for October, and then you might get a little bit more specific and say, okay, here's my Saturday work time. I'm gonna spend the next um, three Saturdays working on applications, researching, whatever, um, so that you can get closer to the goal. And then the witch is getting even more specific with having um, essay drafts and setting a goal for yourself. I'm gonna submit to five um, different scholarships by the end of October because this is a goal that I've set and it'll increase my chances. It's gonna look different for if it's a personal goal or a professional goal, um, but generally you wanna make sure you're brainstorming, you wanna make sure that there's a timeline, and then you wanna act on it and actually do it so that you can get closer to meeting that goal. And it's all about banking your time in a way that is efficient and effective. I've got a couple of resources, and when I think about, when I think about my goals, You've got to spend time on it. You've got to work that plan, right? Um, so there are a bunch of different tools that you can use to just get your brain and mind organized. I've got a list here of a couple of online tools and just general time and task management resources. Evernote, OneNote, Slack, Outlook, and Google Calendar. And I put down the Skim Ahead app on iCal that I'll show you what that looks like later. And then time and task management resources. Together teacher, having a journal if you're more of a write down kind of person, having um, budget templates and using Google Drive so that you can work with other people collaboratively and not have to worry about your computer crashing um, because you've got what you need on the internet. I wanna show you um, what Evernote looks like. I'm gonna very quickly share my screen so you can see a little bit more about my thought process. Here is Evernote, and it. I, what I like about it, are you able to see my screen, I hope? I hope so. <laughs> um, what you'll see about this, and I think this is what I love most about Evernote, is that it looks like a book. You've got, um, I've got like a couple of little boxes up top, and then I've got a, a box where I put in on, what's on my mind. Um, so right here, you'll see I've broken it down into a couple of different buckets. Homework, family, hobbies. 
And in the home bucket, I might have something like, okay, I've got to make some account switches um, that need to happen from my bank. I've got to book travel for Thanksgiving so I see my family. For work, um, I've got some more specific goals around performance management. For family, Halloween is next month. I have two nephews that live in Texas. I need to make sure that I put down on the list to send them their Halloween cards and candy since I'm not going to get to see them. In hobbies, um, I need to get back into running because I've been slacking a little bit. So choosing, making time to choose a race for next year um, and also research a couple of different types of classes that I want to take. So this is just a way to kind of box in some of the ideas that I have and then I can get more granular and, and schedule the actual time for it. Similarly, I've got a little box here. Last a couple months ago, I went to Cuba and I tracked what I spent while I was there. It's just a cool place to keep your um, your ideas. I'm gonna stop screen sharing and keep going. Oops, the presentation go away. Great, thank you. Um, so those are a couple of really cool resources that I like to use. I, I would say that I'm a hybrid. I love writing things down, but I also enjoy and feel like very therapeutic when I'm typing things out on a computer. So up to you what you really like. Here's just like a screenshot of my actual calendars for, you know, for what I'm doing today and what I'm doing on Monday. Um, I put down there, there's this really cool app that I love called the Skim called the skim and they've got something called the skim ahead calendar that you can you pay for every month and you download and into your calendar it'll tell you all sorts of interesting stuff from what interesting sports events are coming up today for instance um if folks that are jewish are observing yom kippur today it's just interesting to have that on my calendar and know about it also later on tonight there's a season premiere of saturday night live and i've got that on my calendar it's just really cool to, to know what's happening. Um, on Monday, you'll see I've got my, my um, professional calendar, but I also have the skim calendar that tells me the Supreme Court is back in session today. That's something that's interesting to me. Um, so that calendar is super interesting because I, um, I'm not only working, I'm not only just kind of sitting at my desk, but I'm also interested in pop culture and interested in the, the fun things that are happening um, around the country or nationally and the political things that are happening too. So that's just a cool way to keep me organized. I also wanted to give you a snapshot. OneNote, um, Evernote rather, has an app that you can download on your phone that syncs. So if I'm, if I'm sitting on the subway and I can't break out my computer, but I've got some ideas of some things that are on my mind, can open up my phone, write it in on my phone, and then when I open my, up my computer, so long as I'm connected to Wi-Fi, I've got all my information there. I love the cloud. So I know that we are running low on time, but I wanted to end with a couple of remarks and takeaways. Um, determine what your organization system is, whether it's paper, electronic, or a combination of both. I'm a hybrid. Set your goals for every month. Um, I wish I um, was in my space right now so I could show you my vision board. Um, I am not one to make full New Year's resolutions because I think they're very hard. But for each month, I broke down and said, here are some small goals that I'm going to have for each month. Um, last month, it was to spend more time in nature. The month before that was to meet up with friends at least three times in the month small goals that I felt really, really um, confident about being able to attain. Allow some space for flexibility. Things change, life changes, um, and you've gotta be flexible. But if you've done some really good planning first ahead of time, it makes it a little bit easier to make those changes. And then find an accountability buddy. Um, who's that person that's gonna keep you motivated and on track? I've got several accountability buddies, and I think you can have a bunch of them depending on where you are. For me, one of my um, my friend, Nicole, is my accountability buddy at work. Um, she is someone who I check in with every week. We don't work on the same team, but we can talk about our goals and like help keep ourselves on, on track. Um, my sister is another person who is an accountability buddy. She's more of the person that will give me those wake up calls when I when I need them. If I call her and I'm feeling a little bit doubtful about myself, um, she's the person that just kind of she's older than me. So she tells me how I need to hear it and doesn't sugarcoat it. And I, I'm thankful 
to her for that. And then um, my boyfriend, Cam, is another person who is my accountability buddy. Um, he works in a different space than I do. And sometimes I'll come in with like this education brain and can't see like any other types of ideas. I'll come in, talk to him about an idea, and he's able to bring a technology and entrepreneurial spirit to this work that I often forget about and can push me in ways that I wouldn't push myself. So you can have lots of accountability buddies. You can have them in different spaces. Um, but so long as you have them, it'll help keep you on track. And with that, um, I would love to connect with all of you. Feel free to email me. Um, that's Eileen underscore Tejeda at mail.harvard.edu. And my LinkedIn is public. So search me, add me, and we can, we can chat. Um, for those of you who aren't students um, and that are watching, also, um, the work that, we're, that you're doing here at Speak Mentorship is important and can't happen without you. So please consider donating if you've um, got the time and the resources. Looking ahead, um, the next speaker is uh, Miss Jasmine Wahi, and she's the founder of director um, of Project for Empty Space and co-director of the Gateway Project Spaces. I think this will be a great opportunity for you to meet new um, people and learn, um, learn about the different um, Thank you all so much for your time today. I think we've got a little bit of time for questions. Thank you, Eileen, for your presentation. I really enjoyed it, and I'm sure uh, the people in our audience enjoyed it too. So uh, we're open to receiving questions, please. Uh, just send us a quick question if you have a question. But uh, I also have a question for you, Eileen. And um, I was going to ask, uh, what is the best way to brainstorm? Do you have a method to brainstorming so that one doesn't end up daydreaming or staying off track and just uh, brainstorming all the time and not getting anything done? That's a great question. Um, I, I think that you should allow you should allow some space for daydreaming and just kind of like, you know, let your mind go free. Um, I, I like when I brainstorm, that's when I use paper. I'll just like write some stuff down. I'll, I'll write things down and bucket it. And that helps it feel a little bit more targeted. So I'll, I might have some brainstorms about ideas for a project that I want to work on at work. And I'll spend some time like thinking about all the different ways that I can brainstorm it. Then I'll separately think about, hmm, I want to make some improvements health-wise. What are like the 12 things that I'm really interested in? Write it down, walk away from it for a little bit, come back, and then choose three or four of those that are priority points for you that you can then turn around and make into a plan. So sit and brainstorm, bucketed brainstorm, and then go back and prioritize and then from there make a plan that way it feels a little bit more um, bite-sized and attainable okay that's really great and uh while we're still waiting for some more questions i had another question i really enjoyed your presentation by the way and uh how can one find motivation to follow through with their plan and their goals so I think for me, I I love my calendar. If my calendar is blank, then if I don't do something, it's as if it didn't happen. So I think that's why I really suggest either writing it down or putting it in a calendar. Because when you get that alert on your phone that says, go run four miles, or you have to run four miles today, it's a little bit harder for me personally to ignore that when I see it pop up on my calendar. So whatever is going to help keep you accountable, like whatever motivates you, I think that for me, it's the calendar. So if I put something down, even if it says like take a 30 minute walk because you're going to be sitting at your desk all day, when it pops up on my calendar, I feel much more compelled to do it because I feel like it's a promise that I've made for myself. Um, for other people, they'll use sticky notes and put them up on their computer to remind them of what they need to do. And then if all else fails, if you've got your accountability buddy, if that person knows the goals that you have, they can check in on you and it can be um, much harder to uh, to not to it can be much harder when you're disappointing someone else. Um, so using either a calendar, using a sticky note or whatever motivates you or checking in with your accountability buddy is a way to make sure that you don't fall short of your goals. 
Thank, uh, thanks for your response. I think that's a really uh, great thing to do. And uh, I think the best thing that you mentioned about having an accountability body is that it's really important to keep you in track. And I think the fear of disappointing somebody could that could be that extra push. So uh, I'm going to wait a little bit and see if we have any more questions. And then if not, we'll be closing soon. I just want to jump in and uh, remind our ambassador that this is a great time to connect with Ms. Tejeda. So if you have any questions, you should see a blue toolbar. On the bottom, you should see a request to speak. If you click on that, then we'll know that you want to answer or ask a question. Uh, and then you can ask her directly or you can type your question into the chat box. So again, um, to all our ambassadors who are joining a call right now, Go ahead and make the connection with Mr. Head and she's available to you. And thank you, Eileen. I actually have a question myself that I'll ask. This is Heather. Um, how do you negotiate the time between family, your social life, and then your work life? There's, did you hear, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Um, so I, I, I broke out time to relax. Um, when I showed my calendar on Outlook, I had a bunch of different color coordinated systems. I think I can maybe go back to the to that calendar. So I, if, like, if you can see. Sorry, one second. Um, oops, just missed. So if you see on um, the calendar, every, every color has a category, and that light green color, um, so you see on Friday, October 6th, is what I call bad behavior, and, and I schedule time for that. So I schedule time for lunch. I schedule time to like, call friends. I schedule time to like, hang out um, on the weekends. Like, these are things that I make sure to plan ahead of time so that I can, that I protect because I know that if I don't have those things, I'm not going to be good for my, I'm not going to be good professionally. I'm not going to be good for my friends or family. I'm not going to be good for those things. So I make sure to like schedule them in ahead of time. Um, and also knowing that like, I'll sometimes have to make some sacrifices. Like I can't always like take those comp days if I want to meet a goal, um, a professional goal at work, if I want to be really good at my job. Um, similarly, um, I can't be really good at my job if I don't allow some time to rest um, or, you know, go out to dinner with like my friends or like go, um, go run in the morning. I know I'm not going to be healthy. I'm going to be run down if I don't do those things. So looking ahead at the week and then um, factoring in some space to to do the things that give me energy. Thank you. I actually have a follow-up question for um, more of our high school audience. So let's say that these students are interested in um, pursuing a pathway towards Georgetown or even Harvard. Um, how should they juggle the social activities or the extracurricular activities that they might have to partake in? And, um, you know, how do they a lot for time towards academics so they um, kind of make themselves the best college applicant when applying. Yeah, so one thing that I learned about myself very early, um, I probably learned this as early as like sixth or seventh grade, is when I have the most energy. I've got the most energy in the morning. I am a morning person. Um, I have friends who could stay up very late and get everything done. That wasn't me. I needed a good night's rest. Um, so I found that I, even in high school, I would wake up earlier than the time to go to school so that I had time to either work on some projects or I had time to, you know, tweak my college applications because I felt like my brain was better at 6 a.m., um, whereas some people would be up until 10 or 11 o'clock at night or even later than that getting work done. So finding when you're, when you have the most energy and using that. Also leveraging the weekends. Um, I know that weekends are time to, to rest um, and to rejuvenate, but scheduling and even if it's three or four hours to um, tweak those college applications, to work, to, to tweak your college applications, to work um, 
and to just like get ready for for the week. Um, I think that it's really hard to decide like what it is that you're going to prioritize, what it is that you're um, that you're not going to prioritize because in high school, um, and especially as you're getting ready for college, everything is important. Um, but I would take like on a Sunday, look at the week. Usually, uh, I mean, with a lot of our like school partners, they might share with you like what the assignments and and the work is for the week. Sit down on Sunday and figure out what are the things that need to get done and see like where are some places where um, where you'll spend that time. One of those evenings where you might just need to like kind of hang out with your with your family and watch TV or just relax. Um, and when are what are those those things that really need to get done? Great, thank you for answering my question. We're just gonna wait a couple more seconds to see if any of our ambassadors want to ask any questions. If not, uh, I do hope I'm just gonna um, go back to your... They can connect with you on your LinkedIn, as you mentioned. So ambassadors, please um, do try to connect with Ms. Tejeda, as she is available to um, help you on your journey from high school to career. Um, she's provided her time graciously, so we want to thank her for that. And I will let Amina close out. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. And Eileen, your presentation was really good. It was so inspiring. And it's such a great tool to use to get things done and uh, I really liked it and I'm sure everybody else enjoyed it. Uh, so please join us on our social media pages. Uh, we have a page on LinkedIn, we have, we're on Facebook and we're on Instagram. Uh, please connect with us there and don't forget to, follow, to connect with Miss Eileen as well. Uh, I think it would be great to hear back from you on what you learned uh, with today's presentation. So thank you for your time and I'm looking forward to having you all join us next time uh, when we speak with Jasmine Wahi. I think it's going to be another exciting event and I really hope that you can all make it. Uh, thanks, Aileen, and thanks everybody for joining us.